off with their heads? When it comes to decapitation, death might come quickly, but consciousness is a whole other story. Ah, flip their heads! The very idea of decapitation is viscerally repugnant. It's so final. There is no fix. And there is something about severing the thought center or consciousness from the rest of the body that has a certain cruelty to it. When Dr. Joseph Inas Guillotin presented the French government with the idea for his decapitation machine, he sold it on the promise that it was a more humane way to cut off the head of someone sentenced to death than the commonly used method of using an axe or sword. Hanging, firing squad, or a new invention, the guillotine. Guillotine? Sounds French. To be sure, decapitations were nothing new when the first guillotine was tried out on a person in 1792, but it quickly became the cleanest and swiftest way to do that horrible deed. In fact, according to history, watching the guillotine come down on some unlucky soul became a spectator sport, of a sort, complete with souvenir shops and eateries ready to feed the crowds that came to watch. But spectators may not have been the only ones watching. Research has shown that it's very likely that those killed by decapitation maintain consciousness for anywhere from 4 to 30 seconds, depending on various observations. The reason for that, according to the website How Stuff Works, is just because we've lost our heads, it doesn't mean the electrical activity in our brains stops immediately. Where human decapitation is concerned, there are anecdotal stories involving severed heads that seemed to respond to stimulus. In 1905, a curious French doctor experimented by calling out an executed man's name right after his head fell into a basket. The doctor wrote, I saw the eyelids slowly lift up without any spasmodic contractions. Next, Langui's eyes very definitely fixed themselves on mine and the pupils focused themselves. After several seconds, the eyelids closed again, slowly and evenly. The physician estimated that a human severed head could stay conscious for 25 to 30 seconds. A couple of hundred years before that, per Discover magazine, a showy executioner had made a spectacle of holding up the severed head of a young woman who had killed a revolutionary leader in France and slapping her cheeks. Spectators claimed that the woman's facial expression changed to one of anger. There isn't a lot of opportunity to study this phenomenon in humans. That would be frowned upon. Scientists have, however, experimented with decapitating rats while recording their brain waves via electroencephalography, or EEG. According to findings by researchers in the Netherlands, there is brain activity for several moments after the head is cut off from the body. They concluded that consciousness is likely to vanish within some seconds after decapitation. Bird? Huh? You cut my head off. I thought we were friends. A similar study undertaken in New Zealand involving decapitating rats and monitoring the brain activity that followed using EEG monitors came to a similar conclusion. Decapitated creatures remain conscious for several seconds after the head has been removed and are likely aware of the sensations of physical pain resulting from the fall of the guillotine. Most experts, however, agree it's unlikely that anecdotal stories from throughout history of severed heads frowning, speaking, or reacting to stimuli are true. More likely, the facial movements are the result of involuntary muscle twitching due to the misfiring of neurons in the guillotined brain. The human brain is fueled by oxygen, using up around 20% of the total oxygen taken in through inhalation. At the point at which the blade of the guillotine strikes the neck, the brain is still full of oxygenated blood which, it is believed, would keep consciousness intact until the organ begins to drain its blood, a process known as exsanguination. In the case of decapitation, the moment the brain becomes deprived of oxygenated blood is when the brain loses consciousness, with death beginning on a cellular level immediately after. Though consciousness may only persist for a few seconds, activity in the brain continues for far longer, possibly many hours. As brain expert Adam Taylor writes in The Independent, Research shows that the brain releases delta waves, those typically released during sleep, up to 30 minutes after the brain has been deprived of oxygen. And brain activity, in general, has been detected in other organisms as late as 96 hours after clinical death. <laughs>